Hello, I will be showing you how to use the tower crate, which is a useful crate for many Rust projects because it provides this abstraction that allows you to take a request and return a response. Now that's pretty simple and I'll show you how powerful it is. And many applications run on that model, taking a request and returning a response. That's why crates like Hyper, Tonic, and Warp use tower underneath. There's two abstractions that are important to tower. The first is the service trait, which is the abstraction that takes the request and returns a response. And in this trait, you can see that it has this generic request that comes in with this call function, and then call function returns a future. If you're not familiar with futures, you're probably gonna struggle with tower. So I encourage you to watch Jon Ferdinand Ronge Jengsen. Other videos and read about futures to get familiar with futures, async, and pinning. Now this future is made up of a result that has a response and an error, and those are types that we define on the trait. There's also this other function that is pull ready. What this does is it allows you to have and define capacity of a service. So let's say you only want a service to have 10 requests being processed at a time. Well, you can use this pull ready to provide and implement back pressure, meaning waiting until one of those 10 requests has finished and then allowing another request in. Once this pull ready function resolves to pull ready okay, then you can invoke this call function. That's the basic overview. And if you're curious about the concept and idea that went into creating this trait, I encourage you to read this great blog by Tokyo on inventing the service trait. This explains the formulation and how the service trait was created. Now, another useful abstraction is the layer trait. The interesting thing about tower is you can layer multiple services on top of each other, each one calling the next like layers in an onion. So the request comes in, it calls a trait, then that service calls another and down the onion until it reaches the core. The layer trait allows you to wrap a service to be reused for different but similar purposes. I think the example's pretty good. Let's say we have a log service that wraps an inner service and this log service will print out where it is being used and some details about the request. So let's say we want to use this on wrapping an inner service that's a load balancer and a rate limiter. So two services. Well, we can wrap the load balancer service and the rate limiter service with this log layer and define the target, which will be one of those two services. That way, whenever this is invoked, it will print out with the target, the target being whichever service is being used as the request comes in and down the onion. So those are the two main abstractions, but Tower provides a lot of other useful things, like the service builder, which will be used to actually construct this onion of multiple services, each calling the next service. So this stacks them all together into those layers. Then Tower also provides many useful implemented layers. You have the concurrency limit layer, the make balance layer, the rate limit layer, and each of these does a useful thing, like the concurrency limit layer limits how many concurrent requests its inner service will handle at a time. It will only allow that many in, then it will cause any more, any excess to wait for one of the processing requests to finish before letting more in. The make balance layer provides service discovery and load balancing, which is quite useful. That's enough documentation. Let's actually jump into the code. So this project creates a TCP listener on localhost at 3000. Then it uses the service builder to create a service that is a rollup of these layers in this, respo this responder service. Now the concurrency limit layer, it only allows two connections in at a time. The logger service prints out how many times it's been called and where it has been called from. So for example, here we're using the layer function, so it'll print out layer function. I actually implemented a logger layer and this will print out logger layer. Then there's this 
next layer that is the waiter service and this just waits for a duration finally the responder service just prints out how many times it's been called and then finishes so the request comes in and goes down through each of these services until it finishes with the responder a couple things to notice you can create a layer out of a service by calling layer function on the service builder and providing it a service and then an inner service that will then be provided to the logger service. This layer function will take in, so this service will be the inner of the logger service. But we can also just pass in a layer by calling dot layer and providing the layer struct. Then for a service, just pass in a new service and this will finish the service builder and return this new service that is just a composite of all of these. Now that's useful, but for each request, we'll want to asynchronously run the request on its own task to avoid blocking on each request. So this service will be need will need to be created for each request coming in. A way to do that is the shared struct from Tower. If you look up shared, you can see that this is a struct that is a make service, meaning it's a factory that produces services when called. So you can see here, there's this my service that's created. It's put into this make service from the shared struct. And then when serve make service is called, it will clone it for each request using make service. In our case, for each time a stream is produced from the listener, call this shared struct which I'm calling factory service. So when you call it, it will produce this new concurrency limit with logger, logger, waiter, and responder service. And it will just clone it each time it's called. Then a Tokyo task is spawned. And because we're using the concurrency limit layer, we need to wait for the concurrency limit layer to allow the request in if there are more than two requests already in the inner service. So we await and then call when it's ready, passing in the TCP stream. And this, and this service provides more functionality to a service. So things like waiting for it to be ready or calling and then and a variety of other features. So that's quite useful if you need to do more complex things. Now that's the overview of what it does. Let's actually run it and see how it operates. I have this command and I have the server running that produces three runs that calls parallel, which will run a command or commands in parallel. I want three jobs to run in parallel and to print the output. And I'm just connecting to the server that's running using netcat. So let's see what happens. You can see that the first two times it's called, and then the last time it waited a bit before it was finished calling because these first two were processing because we only let in two requests at a time. Parallel doesn't put the output in order. So you can see this is the first time it was called. Logger called zero times. Then this is the second time we got one previous call. Then when it's finally let in, you can see there's two previous calls. And the responder also was called two previous times from that request that was finally let in. And if we run this again, it will just increment, waiting for those two requests and then letting the third in. So now that you understand what it does, let's look at how these services and layers are implemented. So this concurrency limit layer is just pulled in from tower. Then this layer function is creating a layer from this logger service. And that is a service that's made up of an inner service, a source or where it's being called from, and the total number of times that it's been called. And I'm using an arc with an atomic U64 because the arc is clone plus sim, so it can be put across threads, it can be sent, and the atomic U64 can just be sent, but not clone. But since it's wrapped in arc, then it can be cloned. The logger takes this inner service and puts it in the inner value of the struct. Then it takes in a source and also stores that. There's a lot of generics going on with services and you'll just have to let the compiler guide you. I generally just say implement then my 
generic. So in this case, we have the S, which is with the inner service, and the R, which is the request for our logger S. Then I'll just define R response, error, and future. So in this case, we know the response, since we're calling an inner service on the call right here, it will be the S, that inner service S, it'll be its response. And same with the error, S is error. Then this is just the generic and standard future. The request in the future will need to be send and static because it might be moved to a different thread and the data needs to outlive that. So it's send because it might be moved or sent and static because it needs to be outlive the move. And right here, we just provide bounds on what the inner service must implement. For example, this S error must be able to implement from standard IO error. And that's because you can see here in our, before we call the inner service, we do a request and write all to that request. And I'm doing this question mark that will return an error if it doesn't successfully complete. And you can see if I get rid of this, because this write all can return a standard error, standard IO error. We don't know that the S error, which is what this must return, or a S response. We don't know that S error will implement a from standard IO error. So that bound must be added. So up here in the where, you can provide bounds on what either the S error, the S future, the S response, or even the S service must implement and same with the request. We want to be able to write to the request. So we want it to be an async write and it'll also be pinned in a box. That's a whole other conversation. Here you can also see that I increment the request total and clone the inner service and also the source because this is moved into the future that's returned. Now that's implementing the service for logger, but there's also this logger layer that's added as this dot layer and not just as the dot layer function that can create a layer out of a service. So in this case, the layer will just return a new layer service from the logger layer as the source. Now this waiter service just takes a duration and another inner service that will be called after waiting the duration. So this is quite similar to the logger service. And another thing is you can see with this pull ready, we only want to call this inner service once it's ready. So that means this waiter service will only be ready once the inner service is ready. So all we have to do is call this self.enter and return the if it's ready or not from this pull ready of the inner service. Then this is just another standard call where we return a future, but in this case, just wait the duration that's been put and stored into this service. Finally, the responder service, which is the final service that would be called, is essentially just the logger service, but with no logging. So it's just seeing how many times it's been called. And in this case, I use an anyhow error because this is the final service. So there are no inner service. So there, there is no inner service to have, you know, an S error or an S response. This is defining the final response that will be returned. And in this case, we just want an anyhow error, which is just a easier way to handle errors. It's just a crate. And this will be immediately ready, but because we're not waiting for any inner service or any other resource to be available before this is called, this, can, this can just be called at any time. So again, just add one to the request total, print it out and return the future. And again, this is the final service to be called in our onion. So you can see that there's no calling of a service like we have up here. You can see here, this returns from the inner service. It just returns whatever its value is, but here it just returns an empty okay. And that will just be run for each request. And each request, it will spawn from Tokyo and run it. That way it can process many requests at the same time. I'll leave a link to this GitHub repo in the description. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.